Hello and welcome to another session from American English File 1, 3rd edition. This is Roya from Roja's YouTube channel. And today we have Unit 2A, My Room, from our general elementary English course. So please hit the subscribe button and let's quickly start today's lesson. So what we have today for Unit 2A is a vocabulary section about things and prepositions. Then we will have grammar, singular and plural nouns. For pronunciation, we have the final S or ES that we normally add to singular nouns to make them plural. We will learn a few points about that. And also we have a listening and speaking section. Now, just to engage you into this new lesson, we have some pictures on this slide. I want you to look at them and tell me what they are. So let's start from the one from the left. What's this? A charger. Very good. What's the second one? A phone. Nice. The third one? A wallet. And the last one? A car key. So you may already know them, but if not, it's okay. You can just learn them right now. Good. Now, please take a deeper look at the two photos on this slide. As you see, we have two pictures. We have two rooms. We have an artist's room and a blogger's room. So if you don't know the meaning of the word artist, and also blogger, I can tell you, an artist is a person who draws, paints, or makes artwork, like sculptures, paintings, etc. And a blogger is someone who writes about their thoughts and experiences on the internet and shares those experiences with other people. So, now, what's your guess? Let's look at the first photo on the top. Whose room is it? An artist's room or a blogger's room? Nice. I think you have guessed that it's a blogger's room. And how can we tell? How can we understand that this is a blogger's room? Can you tell me? You may say that, okay, because we have two photos on the wall, we have a photo of a girl, which is kind of <clears throat> artistic, nice, like a cool photo shoot. And then we have the photo of the Eiffel Tower. We also have a PC on a desk and also a mug with a heart shape. So yeah, these can tell us that maybe this is a blogger's room. Now, what about the second photo? Now you know that it's an artist's room, but how can we tell? How can we make a guess? Exactly. We can see some sheets of paper on the floor. We can see some buckets of paint on the table. We can see a ladder. So yeah, this can also tell us that maybe we have an artist in this room. Okay, so now it's time to go to the book. Please go to page 14, unit 2A, and look at the two photos we have on this page. We have picture A, a neat room, and picture B, a messy room. Let's look at a neat room. So as you see, a neat room is a clean room. Everything is in order, tidy, Everything is in its place. And this room belongs to, or better say, belonged to Virginia Woolf. She was a modernist writer. She was born in 1882 and then died in 1941. Picture B is a picture of a messy room. So messy is the opposite of neat. As you see, it's very untidy, not very clean. So this room belongs to Jan Rankin. 
He is a crime writer and he was born in 1960. He is alive now, so that's why I say he is a crime writer. But Virginia is not alive anymore. She is dead. That's why I said she was a modernist writer. Good. So now please look at page 15, section 1, vocabulary for things. Look at the photos of the two rooms and tell me, are you neat or messy? Maybe it's a good idea to take a look at your room and see if you're neat or messy. Okay, now please look at the photos again. We have some numbers next to the things in the photo. Can you name one to 10 in the photos? What are they? Let's check together. So in Virginia Woolf's room, we have number one, the door, two, lamp, three, file, four, glasses, and five, chair. And in Jan Rankin's room, we have six, laptop, seven, window, eight, photo, nine, table, and ten, newspaper. Now, please go to Vocabulary Bank, page 151. And on this page, you can see some photos of things and also a list of words on the left side. And what you need to do is match the words and photos. So please write the number of each photo next to the right word. Please do this in two minutes. Now we can check if you're ready. You can also listen to track 2.1 to check your answers. So number 15 is a bag, five a calendar, 24 a change purse. It would be a good idea to also repeat after me so that you learn the pronunciation of the word. So please listen and repeat after me. Number nine, a charger. Number one, a coin. Number 21, a credit card. 23, a dictionary. 2, a file or a binder. 4, glasses. 22, headphones. 13, an ID card. 11, a key. 29, a lamp, 3, a laptop, 17, a magazine, 14, a newspaper, 30, a notebook, 26, a pen, 16, a pencil, 12, a phone, 8, a photo, 20, a piece of paper, 19, scissors, please be careful with this, it's not skizzers, S and C together sound like s scissors, 28, sunglasses, 25, a tablet, 27, a ticket, seven, a tissue, 10, an umbrella, six, a wallet, and number 18, a watch. Now, please look at a plural nouns box after part B. Some words for things are always plural. For example, words like glasses, headphones, sunglasses and scissors. So they don't have a singular form. You should not use a or an with these nouns. So you cannot say a glasses or a headphones. You should only say glasses, 
headphones, scissors. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions about some of the pictures, and I want you to tell me what they are. So please look at number 23. Tell me, what is it? Yes, it's a dictionary. Now, please look at number 19. What are they? Uh-huh, they're scissors. What about number six? What is it? It's a wallet. And number four, what are they? Good job, they're glasses. Good, now we have completed one section. Now back to page 15 and let's look at section two, grammar. And today we have singular and plural nouns for our grammar section. So first, please give yourself some time and complete the chart in part A. We have a singular and plural column. We have singular on the left, for example, a pen, and a plural form is two pens. So when we have more than one thing, that becomes a plural. Two, three, ten, one hundred, one thousand, etc. That's a plural noun. Or an umbrella, that's one, but then we have two umbrellas. Yeah, we add S to make it plural. Then we have a watch and then two watches. So as you see here, we add ES instead of S. I will explain why we do that. So, and then for the last one, we have a dictionary and two dictionaries. Good. So now let's go to page 126, Grammar Bank 2A, and understand some of the details. On page 126, 2A, we have first a box, like a white box with singular and plural nouns. You can also listen to track 2.2 and repeat these sentences. Guys, it's always a good idea to repeat what you hear because you will learn them better by repeating. So please repeat after me. It's a book. They're books. It's a watch. They're watches. It's a dictionary. They're dictionaries. It's an umbrella. They're umbrellas. It's an ID card. They're ID cards. Nice. Now let's look at our rules. So we use a or an with singular nouns. For example, a bag or an egg. We use an when a noun begins with a vowel sound. So I already told you about vowel sounds that are normally in letters like a, e, i, o, and u. But the important thing is the sound, not just the letter. We use a with nouns beginning with u or eu. For example, the sound in university. You see, in university, the word starts with a u, but the first sound is not a vowel sound. It's a y, y. It's university. So it's not a vowel sound. That's why we say a university or a euro. I will also explain this in Persian very quickly. بچه ها وقتی که ما میخوایم ان به اول یک کلمه اضافه کنیم یعنی تشخیص بدیم که آیا باید ای بگیره یا ان بگیره باید به اون کلمه به صدای اولش توجه کنیم نه فقط به حرف اولش درسته که میگیم حرف ای ای آی او یو اگر که بیان ما یعنی وو سم داریم و باید ان اضافه کنیم ولی فقط اینجوری نیست مثلا ما کلمه هایی داریم مثل یونیورسیتی مثل یورو که با یو و ای شروع میشن ولی اینا ای میگیرن ان نمیگیرن 
چرا؟ چون که صدای اول مهمه نه فقط حرف اول یونیورسیتی صدای اولش اگه دقت کنی صدای یه هست صدای حرف چی میگن صدای صداداری مثل آ او اینا نیست پس ای میگیره Now if we simply add s to a word to make it plural we say it's a regular plural for example a bag bags or a country countries or a watch watches but please be careful a word like country or dictionary where we have a consonant plus y at the end change in spelling so when you add s to country y changes to i e s and for a word like watch that ends in c h s h s or x we need to add e s to the word so both the spelling and also the pronunciation changes so we say a watch watches But we also have some irregular plurals. They are not a lot, but we have some in English language. So, a child, children. So we say one child, but two children. A man, men. A woman, women. Be careful with the pronunciation of this one. We write W-O-M-E-N, but we say women and a person and people and finally if we have a two word noun like ID card we add s to the second noun so then it changes to ID cards or credit cards there's also a box on the right side I'm sorry on the left side of page 126 um, in part 2a you can see a box about the word the or better say the article the so we use the instead of a or an when we know what we are talking about for example I say look at the board answer the question So I know which board I'm talking about or which questions I'm talking about. That's why I use the. Or somebody is knocking. Please open the door. I know which door I'm talking about. Maybe it's the door of the class or the door of my house. Okay, and we also use the with singular and plural nouns so it's not only for one thing or for more than one thing you can use them for both you can say the door or the doors it's your turn now please go to page 127 and look at section 2a part a complete with a or an write the plural Please do this exercise in two or three minutes. <coughs> Let's check now. So a photo, photos. Number one, a window, windows. Number two, a key, keys. Number three, an ID card, ID cards. For a country, countries, remember IES. Five, a watch, watches, remember ES. Six, an exercise, exercises. Seven, a person, people, this is an irregular plural. Eight, an email, emails. Nine, a box, boxes. And ten, a woman, women. Now, please do part B. Write sentences with its or their and a or an if necessary. For example, we have pen, we should write it's a pen. Or we have buses, it's a plural word, so you have to write their buses. Please do this in three minutes. 
Let's check your answers. Number one, they're children. Number two, it's a change curse. Number three, they're men. Number four, it's an umbrella. Number five, they're sunglasses. Number six, they're scissors. Number seven, it's a charger. Number eight, they're dictionaries. Nine, it's a coin. And ten, it's an egg. Turn to page 15 again, and we have the next section, section three, pronunciation. So before you look at a book, I want you to look at my slide because I have some information to share with you here. So we have the final S and ES that we add to nouns to make plural forms. You should know that the plural S is pronounced in two ways. So the first way is the S sound. And the second way is the Z sound. Okay, now let's see how. The S sound happens after these unvoiced sounds. So what are unvoiced sounds? Unvoiced sounds are sounds that produce no vibration in your throat when you pronounce them. Consonants like k, p, f, t. So when you pronounce these sounds, you have no vibration in your throat. If you want to test it, you can put your hand on your throat and see how it is. Then pronounce k, t, p. You see, there's no vibration. You can feel no vibration in your hand. So after these unvoiced sounds, the s sound is produced. For example, books, maps, cat. But after all other voiced endings, the Z sound is produced. Now again, for example, um, we have the sounds like V, L, M, or V. If you put your hand on your throat, you can feel the vibration when you pronounce these sounds. That's why after them, we produce the z sound with s like phones, keys, photos. So I'm also going to quickly explain this in Persian now. بچه های توضیح کتاب به فارسی این دوتا صدایی که ما وقتی اس اضافه میکنیم به شکل جمع کلمه ها صدای س و ز هستن. حالا برای اینکه تشخیص بدیم ام، توی کدوم ام، کلمه ها صدای س تولید میشه و توی کدوم صدای ز تولید میشه این بستگی به این داره که اون ام، کلمه شکل مفردش آخرین صداش به چی خط میشه اگه آخرین صدا به صدای انویست خط میشه یعنی صداهایی مثل ک، پ، ت، ف که توی گلوی ما ویبره ایجاد نمی کنن. برای امتحانش هم میتونید دستتون رو بزنید روی گلوتون و این کلمه رو تلفظ کنید مثل پ، ت، ف و میبینید که هیچ ویبره ای ایجاد نمیشه ولی اگر که ویبره ایجاد بشه مثل موقعی که ما یه صداهایی مثل ب، ل، م، و داریم توی دستتون اون ویبره رو حس میکنید اگه این صداها آخر کلمه ما باشن وقتی بهش از اضافه بکنیم صدای ز تولید میکنیم Good. Now please look at a book, section 3, part A. Listen to track 2.3 to the words and sounds. Then listen and repeat them. So here we have the sounds s and z, as I told you, like snake and zebra. And we also have the third sound when we add es uh, to the word, like glasses. So that's the is sound. Part B. Listen to track 2.4. Read the rule. Circle the words where ES is pronounced is. 
Now let's check. So we have number one, glasses. Number four, boxes. Number five, pieces. And number seven, pages. So these words end in ES and they produce the sound is. Now part C, look at the photos of the two rooms again on page 14 and say, what plural things can you see there? Let's check. So in Virginia Woolf's room, you can see chairs, doors, files, and glasses. And in Jan Rankin's room, you can see tables, desks, chairs, pieces of paper, photos, and CDs. Section 4, page 15, vocabulary and speaking. So we have three prepositions here to learn, in, on, and under. I'm sure you know the meanings. But please look at the three pictures and complete the sentences, the three sentences you see, with in, on, or under. So these three prepositions show the location or the position of things. For example, number one, the glasses are on the notebook. The credit cards are in the wallet. The bag is under the desk. Now, for the next part, we're going to turn to communication. You can do this on pages 103 or 108, but you can also look at my slide. In fact, it's better that you look at my slide because I have a picture here. You see, I have a picture of a desk and some other things. And first, I'm going to ask you some questions. So we have two questions, where is the or where are the? It depends if the word is singular or plural. And then you have to make a sentence using on, in, and under telling me where they are, where the things are. So let's start. Please look at the things that will be added to this picture. So first you see there is a charger. Please tell me, where's the charger? Now we have a pair of glasses. Where are the glasses? Where are the keys? Where's the laptop? Where are the scissors? Where's the umbrella? And finally, where's the wallet? Nice. So now we have the answers here. The charger is in the bag. So you see we have a complete sentence. And we are telling the position of the charger by using the preposition in. The charger is in the bag. The glasses are on the book because glasses is a plural noun. So the glasses are on the book. The keys are under the desk. The laptop is on the chair. The scissors are on the book. The, um, the umbrella is under the chair and the wallet is on the desk. Okay, now we're going to switch roles. This time you ask the questions. We have the picture with the things and we also have the answers. So you know which words you should ask for. So please start. The file is under the desk. 
The headphones are in the bag. The magazine is under the bag. The phone is on the chair. The photo is on the desk. The tissues are in the bag. The watch is on the book. So the answers would be, or better say your questions should be, where is the file? Where are the headphones? Where is the magazine? Where is the phone? Where is the photo? Where are the tissues? And where is the watch? Last section for this lesson. Section five, listening. Listening for detail. So please look at part A, listen to track 2.5. You're gonna hear three people. Please listen to them and number the places they talk about. One to three in the chart. So we have three places in her bag, on his desk, in her study. So you have to number them as you hear. Please do this. Good, let's check. Number one on his desk, number two in her study, and number three in her bag. Now, you're gonna listen again and write what things that people have in each place. For example, on his desk, he has a computer. What else? Please listen and write. Let's check your answers. So for speaker one, we have a computer. So that was on his desk, pens, pieces of paper, a lamp, a photo, and a phone. For speaker two, in her study, she has a desk, a table, two chairs, books, a dictionary, and a map. And uh, I should also tell you that a study is a place where someone studies. Like a room that you have a desk and chairs and everything so you can study. Now, in, for speaker three, in her back, she has a phone, a charger, sunglasses, tissues, keys, and a change purse. Now, we're going to also look at a transcript. So, it's also on page 118 in the student book. Speaker one says, on my desk, I have my computer. I have some pens and pieces of paper. So remember, a piece of paper is a singular word, but if you want to change it into plural, you have to say pieces of paper. I have a lamp and a photo of my family. Oh, and a phone. It's very neat. Number two, in my study, I have a desk, a table, and two chairs. I have a lot of books and a big dictionary on the desk. It isn't very neat, and I have a map of the world on the wall. Number three, I have a lot of things in my bag. I have my phone. I have the charger for my phone. I have my sunglasses, tissues, and I have my house keys and my change purse. Okay, now the question is, what do you have in your bag? Please give yourself one minute to talk about the things you have in your bag. Okay, guys, thank you again for being with me today. I hope you have learned a lot from this session. Uh, please join our Telegram channel for more exercises. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it. I will see you soon in the next video.